good to see you. Good to see you too. I'm so excited to see you at all. So I'm so happy you're here. I'm glad to be here. I read your history. I looked at your scans and your testing. So I have a really good idea why you're here, but I want to hear from you. What are your goals? I've always wanted to understand my brain better. And especially the last few years with a lot of athletes dealing with CTE, that's been popping up in my head. Like, how is my brain? And I often say, you know, know yourself. I'm like, how can you know yourself if you don't know your brain? Uh, something's been gravitating to me. Uh, we're just understanding myself more and more in depth and brain health is, is one of those for sure. So you want to get a look at your brain. Absolutely. And then also to check your memory. Yes. The short term memory seems to be an issue. Yes. And focus. Yes. I'm like a last minute person. I don't know. And my wife. Always that way. And maybe I should apply the Lombardi rule of if you're on time, you're late. So and I heard that my whole football career. <laughs> Interesting. I like that. If you're on time, you're late. Yeah, that's what they always say. Yeah. So you played football since you were six. Yes. And you were obviously really good, which meant you played a lot. Yeah. Right? The only NFL player I scanned who had a healthy brain was a backup quarterback. Wow. Because you just don't get hit that much. Right. Always a wide receiver? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I played running back growing up a little bit, defense some, but since high school, strictly wide receiver. And so we actually did a comparison study of our wide receivers versus our defensive backs versus our linemen. And the worst position for brain health on the team is offensive line. Oh, right. Because they get hit in the head every Every play, play contact. Wide receivers get big hits, but they don't get the thousands As much. of little hits. And all those little hits add up. All those little hits add up because your brain is really soft your brain is the consistency of soft butter, tofu, custard, somewhere between egg whites and jello. And it's housed in a really hard skull that has sharp bony ridges. And your brain floats in your skull. It's not anchored, it floats in water. And so every time you got hit going over the middle and somebody clocked you inside your skull, your brain's doing that. Wow. That's never been explained to me like that, ever. Yeah, yeah. and right. you know your brain controls everything. everything. Right. How you think, how you feel, how you act. I read that you had five documented concussions. Yeah, so the first one was, it was college. We were playing Texas and I ran a route over the middle and I got hit like on every side you can get on. So the safety hit me, the cornerback hit me from this side, the linebacker hit me from this side. So I was really surprised the quarterback threw the ball, but once it was there, I was like, well, I gotta go get it. And it just, it was like quiet noise. Like it was 100,000 people screaming, but it's still, I don't know, it's weird to explain. It just felt quiet. And I was dazed to the point where I didn't even know the sideline. They did an MRI, I believe, I remember right. And nothing was really wrong as they would say. I ended up playing the next week. And then NFL wise, I was with the Seahawks and I went up for a pass in the end zone and went back like this and hit my head on the ground. And uh, that took me out the game. They did an MRI or a checkup and everything was fine. So they cut me right after that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think a lot of players, is it more of they don't know about it or they just don't want to the truth? Well, I think initially they didn't know. Right. I think now everybody knows. Right. Football's a brain damaging sport. Own it. And if you're going to play, know the risks and they're significant. But there are other brain damaging jobs. If you're a firefighter, that's a brain damaging job. The toxins, the emotional trauma that goes with it and the head trauma doesn't mean we're not going to have firefighters. But what it means is from the moment they sign up, we should be protecting them. So we did a study called SPECT, and SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how the brain works. And it basically shows us three things. Good activity, you have a lot. Too little, so areas of decreased activity, a little bit. And areas of increased activity. 
If we just look at the four on the left, that's looking at the outside surface. And all you should see is full, even, symmetrical activity. The blue and red and white ones, it's looking at the most active parts of the brain. So blue is average, red and white are the most active parts. The cerebellum should be the most active because it's 10% of the brain's volume. It's got half the brain's neurons. And when we look at your scan, the cerebellum here is sort of sleepy. I want to activate that. Compared to most of my football players, you have a great brain. This is not a brain that's headed for dementia. A couple of years from now, it's going to be better because I have a sense you'll do what I ask you to do. Absolutely. You can see here in the top front, it's low. So you don't have a hole in your brain, but the holes mean less blood flow. Odds are if you had an MRI, it'd right. be normal, but it's sleepy, probably from the concussion. And this is why you're late. It's because you actually don't get ready to go until your brain's irritated. They go, come on, you need to go. <laughs> so it's almost like you need a little bit of stress or motivation. That is, that's to go. Right. Now, as I said, your cerebellum here is a little sleepy. What kind of exercise are you doing now? A lot of um, performance training. So hiking, uh, hit workouts. Do you ever play a racket sport? I, well, I played ping pong growing up. So we had we had a table um, in the house. We're my so house. I have a whole room for one. Really? Because it's the best it's brain good. game. Really? Like, I it's, didn't even know that. It's a great brain game. Because oh, you wow. got to get your eyes, your hands, and your feet all working together while you think about the spin on the ball. So it's almost like aerobic chess. But people who play racket sports live longer than anybody else. Wow, I did not know yeah. that. And then swimming and football and soccer. Well, I'm, gonna tennis, I'm gonna give me some tennis rackets and everything now. <laughs> tennis would yeah. be great. Uh, because if we can activate this, it'll actually activate your frontal lobes. Your emotional brain is a bit busy. Mm -hmm. And I think that may go with some of the emotional trauma that you've had. It's, it definitely, you know, was very, very tough because I mean, she was the anchor of our family. So it was my father, but my mother was a big reason, you know, why I started doing what I do. She was definitely like the catalyst for like the approval to be like, okay, you can go do it. And so, yeah, so I just got to make sure to keep honoring her by doing it and everything else. But yeah, it was definitely tough for sure. Well, that's how she lives. That's right. That's right. She lives through you. Absolutely. What was she like? She was very pur purpose driven. So she always taught me, you know, at the end of the day, what matters is your purpose more than anything else. And uh, yeah, that's my mom. I do miss her like annoying me a lot. But myself, I said, it's the things that, that annoys you are the things that you miss. So I was wish she could call <laughs> me. Like right now, like, are you okay? Or I love to hike and she would always be like, I was hiking in Red Rocks in Vegas yesterday. And I, I grabbed my phone because, you know, it's still surreal to me. And I grabbed it and I was like, ah. And I would always send her a picture, me on top of a mountain. She was like, get down from there. You don't need to be up there. So <laughs> I always, I always just uh, mess with her like that. So it's those little things that I definitely miss. You see those four circles, that's how people get sick, but it's also how they get well. So there's a biological circle, that's your brain, we'll talk about it. There's a psychological circle, it's your mind, sort of your development, how you think. There's a social circle, who you hang out with, what's going on in your life. We just came out of a pandemic, right? And there's a spiritual circle, which is why do you care? You know, what is your sense of meaning and purpose. And so understanding you in that context and then making sure we work on each of those circles, that's how people get healthy. Wow. And so your mom demonstrating a purpose-driven life, well, that serves you. Absolutely. So that you can serve others. One of the questions we always have people ask is, well, does it fit? Does my behavior today fit the values, purpose, and goals I have for my life. That's a great accountability system. And most people don't know yeah. where they're on the planet. 
Yeah. And so it becomes about them and then they get sad as opposed to when it's about other people, you, you're happier. In the, in the moments where I do get sad, not just now, but just overall, you know, since I started this journey of losing football is, I realized that when I served other people, when I gave value to other people, it filled me up because it let me know I have value to give. If that makes any sense. So I started to realize like, wait, like if I can brighten somebody else's day, it means I have something inside of me that's worth giving to help people. So anytime I get down, that's what I always go to and it helps me a lot. Have you ever been in a traumatic situation? Not that I remember. And has your mom or dad ever been in a traumatic situation? I know my dad has. He was just telling the story yesterday where he got robbed and and uh, held at gunpoint and shot at and everything. So, so that may have been written in his genetic code. Yeah. Trauma can become generational. So if you think of um, what's going on in Syria with civil the hatred, the fear, the brutality. It's changing the genes in those children, which means they're gonna feel this anxiety for generations. And then growing up African-American, right. there's generational trauma. Dang, that is... And so, and so it may not, probably it's not you, that it may be something, but it doesn't mean you have to live with it. And so the breathing will help, but then also knowing what thoughts drive it. Like I'm not safe. Any other thoughts attached to the social anxiety, you think? They won't like me, maybe, they'll maybe, judge me. I think it's definitely heightened with my popularity now. You know, just being out and like feeling like eyes are always on me. And I'm a person that like, I'm not a spotlight type of guy. That was, you know, it just, it makes me more aware of my surroundings, probably way too much than I need to. So one thing I like to do is whenever you feel anxious, write down what you're thinking. See if we can begin to connect because thoughts, what we think, drives feelings, how we feel. Feelings drive behavior, behaviors drive outcomes. If you're like, go to, in like, it's not safe, then you're gonna feel anxious. Right. And then you're gonna be looking around. And then maybe you don't go out. I mean, for some people, they like don't leave their house because yeah. the, they never challenge the thought. I'm not a fan of positive thinking. I'm a fan of accurate thinking. I love that. John 8, 32, know the truth. I love that. The truth will set you free. Questions? No, I mean, I just, I'm just grateful. You know, I just feel like I'm, um, I don't know, just into a whole nother space of growth and excitement, you know, just to understand everything and, and, and also connecting dots to where I don't feel like, like there's something wrong with me, you know, with the thoughts that I think or that's how I felt in the past and seeing my brain and understanding, oh, okay, this is why. So it just helps me um, put two and two together. <laughs> So if this is where your brain is today, I don't think you're getting CTE or dementia. Yeah. Now, don't go be stupid with your right, brain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think we can make you happier. And I would predict a couple of years from now, your brain's gonna look like this. Your brain can be so much better. Oh, wow. We just have to do the right things.